Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Pelton, and one of my passions as a health educator is teaching people about some of the fundamental things that you can do to take control of your life and your health. Most people don't realize that we have a tremendous amount of personal control over our own immune system and our own aging process. The topic I'm going to share with you today is one of my favorite nutritional topics, the trace mineral selenium. A little personal story when it comes to selenium because back in the early 1980s I was involved in some early cancer research. I was working at the University of California at San Diego with a world famous scientist by the name of Dr. Gerhard Schrauser and we were researching the relationship between selenium and breast cancer. We purchased mice that are specifically bred with a cancer virus um, so that they're all going to get cancer in their lifetime. Since we're working with breast cancer we just purchased the female mice and I'm in charge of the mouse colony. Every day I'm going over and counting the tumors and measuring the tumors so I'm deeply involved in this experiment and this is the time when I'm a pharmacist started to get in involved in scientific research and actually getting interested in nutrition. So I'm working on breast cancer with selenium and after 15 months we shut down the experiment due to issues both related to time and money, but in 15 months a control group of mice and the same group of mice who are receiving one to two parts per million of selenium in the drinking water, just trace amounts of selenium. The control mice, 85 percent of them had mammary tumors and developed breast cancer, 15 percent of the mice getting one to two parts of selenium. 70% reduction in cancer with just trace amounts of selenium. This had a powerful effect on me as a young pharmacist shifting careers and getting into nutrition and natural medicine. So selenium, I found out early in the 1980s, is a powerful anti-cancer nutrient. Back in 1982, Dr. Schrauser explained to me and pointed out to me that we were using selenium to suppress cancer growth, but he said look, we're using a cancer virus as our cancer model, so someday people are going to realize selenium is not only a powerful anti-cancer agent, it's also a powerful antiviral agent. That has come to pass. These days the HIV and AIDS community is recognizing the powerful antiviral characteristics of selenium. And some more recent research understanding the connection between selenium and its antiviral capabilities um, goes like this. They're finding out now that the genes in viruses require enormous amounts of selenium. So the genes are just blueprints that give a message and the message in the viral genes is make a protein that has enormous requirements for selenium. So what we're finding out with Ebola virus and West Nile virus and I assume probably even the swine flu virus is when people get infected with these viruses, the viruses eat up all the available selenium right away and throw an individual into selenium deficiency which dramatically weakens your immune system and makes you more susceptible to the virus taking over and being a very serious viral infection. So what we're finding out, and, and there's some new science here that I'm going to share with you today, when a person is selenium deficient you're much more susceptible to getting a viral infection. And I've got a little story that I'm going to tell you that kind of tries to express this. Here we've got a big, strong, 185-pound man, muscular, which represents an individual with adequate selenium, a strong immune system. And over here we have a little 15-pound dog that comes up and goes, yap, 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 yap. The big, strong man says, get out of there, and the dog gets frightened and runs away. The dog is representing the virus. Now a second example, we've got a weak little frail teenage boy, underweight and not muscular at all, and the same little 15 pound dog comes up and goes yap yap yap. The kid is afraid of the dog and kind of cringes and animals can sense fear, so the dog keeps yapping and yapping and the kid's frightened. So that's an example of an individual with a weak immune system and the dog representing the virus. Third situation, new science that's just been discovered, still have the weak boy, frail little young man representing a weak immune system, low level of selenium. The little 15 pound dog comes up, yap, 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 representing the virus, but because we're selenium deficient here, the virus can mutate and become a killer virus. So in this scenario, the little dog becomes a 2,000 pound bear and eats or kills the little boy. This is the new science. They're finding out that when an individual is selenium deficient, 
a normal virus that will do nothing more than cause a minor upper respiratory infection for a couple of days. In the case of a selenium deficiency, that virus can mutate and become a killer virus. So it's critical to understand how important selenium is to your immune system. You don't want to ever be selenium deficient. I'm recommending that people consume about 400 micrograms of selenium a day. And selenium has some powerful other characteristics. It's a major antioxidant. It detoxifies some of the heavy metals like mercury all by itself. Um, it supports the liver for detoxification and liver health. So there's lots of things that selenium does. Um, I'm just really trying to bring people's attention to the fact that it's one of the critical nutrients for a healthy immune system and a long, healthy life. My recommendation in closing 400 micrograms of selenium per day for adults. Thanks for listening. Take your selenium.